always helped out a friend with his restaurants. I'd help him in the front of the house. And um, around 2010, we talked about doing a joint venture. And uh, my brother and I had some real estate property at the time. We were always looking for different things to do outside of teaching. And we decided to open a restaurant. The intent was for it to be a small restaurant um, where I was going to own the restaurant. And I brought a good friend of mine from second grade. Uh, I've been a lifelong friend to be the head chef. And we created this thing, and um, it got much bigger every year, and uh, here we are. I ended up leaving teaching in 2014 uh, to pursue this full-time. Uh, my brother called me at 6 in the morning and said, the restaurant's on fire and I think it's going to the ground. He came and picked me up, and it was just sheer panic. I watched... Uh, you know, we watched them across the street for about three hours, the building completely go to the ground. Um, it was like in slow motion, it was probably the worst day of my life. Um, I sat there with, you know, many of my uh, employees came down and, and watched and, and some customers came down and it became a big crowd and it was devastating. And uh, when I sat there, I realized that I had just retired from teaching uh, and I wasn't sure where I was going to go next because everything in front of me was, was my life. And um, you know, it was a pretty devastating day for me. Uh, well, once I found out that Nolan's was on fire, I actually had woke up probably to about 12 messages, phone calls, missed calls, um, around starting at like 5.30 in the morning till when I received them about like 6.00. Uh, and I didn't believe it. Like, um, I didn't believe it. So, I mean, I got up, I lived around the corner and I just drove down here. And by the time I got down here, half of like the Nolan's family was here. All the servers were here. Uh, and it was like heart wrenching. Um, especially because I did work the night before and everything was fine. Like I felt like, you know, you leave and then you leave late and then you come back to your place of employment in flames. So it's definitely like heartbreaking to watch. It was scary for them because they didn't know what they were going to do. Fortunately, the community uh, restaurants were really good and, and they picked up a lot of my employees and, and offered them jobs uh, to help them get through the summer. Didn't really help much in the winter time, but then the community and the Kennedy Country Club really wrapped their arms around Nolan's and they put a fundraiser together. Um, we called it Nolan Stakeout, and we did, it was a really great event. It was in November, uh, end of October, early November. That was probably about a thousand people came down, and we raised money for uh, our employees to get through this, uh, the wintertime months. So, I was also fortunate that you know I had about 25 employees at the time. 22 of them came back. They waited for Nolan's to reopen. They got part-time jobs elsewhere, but once we reopened. 18 months later, I, I got them all back. So I felt very fortunate about that. Our, our business has expanded a great deal, and our catering has expanded a great deal. So Nolan's is just, it keeps growing, and it's fortunate because in the restaurant business, restaurants don't typically grow. Um, you know, their first year they're very busy, and then they just die out after that. So uh, we've been fortunate. You know, we've gone from just a small restaurant to a restaurant that caters, and we also do the Kennywood Country Club, the food and beverage there as well.